I'm Jamie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the first episode of Taskmaster series 17. Sorry this video is coming out uh, a bit later than I wanted it to um, but I was busy and then ill and then busy again so I've only just got round to filming this but I am so excited to talk about it because spoiler alert I really enjoyed this episode and I think we're in it for a really good season. So first of all I just want to mention the theme. I love the themes that they do each season. I like how they mix it up. This time it's like a Victorian gothic theme and I think this is such a fantastic theme. It's one that hasn't really been done as much before. It's a bit of a darker theme um, and especially when we go into the fields that we saw in the first episode and also in the trailer it gives a really like barren landscape which really contrasts with the very like chaotic and eclectic style of the house so i think it's a really great theme and i think nick fits in fantastically with his dracula costume um i don't know if he knew about the theme beforehand or if this was just something he was going to do anyway um but i think i think it looks amazing and i can't wait to see more areas of the house and see like what they've done with it and yeah, I just, I think it's a really, really fun theme. I just wanted to mention that before we began because I talked about it in my cast reaction video. And yeah, talking about the cast, I think everybody has done really, really well on the first episode. There's nobody that I didn't really like, nobody that I didn't gel with. I thought everybody was really entertaining and I can't wait to see what they do next. Personally, for me, my favorites is probably Sophie or Nick. I think both of them were just fantastically silly and hilarious. I think they're definitely going to be fan favourites, particularly Sophie in my opinion. So on to the tasks. I think overall the tasks were very very good. I think if, if they followed a very similar format to what they did in series 16 for the first episode. Prize task obviously, then a single task, like single person task that takes place in the house, followed by a team task and then a location task and then finally the studio task. So yes, that format worked really well in series 16, with series 16 being one of my favourite seasons and the first episode I think being one of the best opening episodes that they've had. This I think was also a fantastic opening episode. It fit in a lot of things that are exciting for existing viewers and also would be interesting for new viewers. So I'm going to go through each task and talk about what I liked about it, whether I think it's a good task and how it fit in with the rest of the episode and also talk about my favourite uh, contestants uh, attempts at the task. So first of all the prize task. This task was the gl most glorious thing that sounds like Greg Davis if you mumble it. This they're really having to stretch for the prize tasks but I did think even though it is a bit of a weird prize task I think it did work quite well. It allows each contestant to think, think creatively. There's not really that many restrictions like if you try hard enough you could maybe argue that anything sounds like Greg Davis he definitely ranked the prizes based on how good of an actual prize they were rather than how much it sounded like Greg Davis. Although I definitely think he took that into account, particularly because Eggs Benedict was rated quite low because Benedict sounds nothing like Davis. Um, I did think Joanne's one was pretty decent. Again, a bit of a stretch in trying to get it to sound like Greg Davis. But the actual jug I think was quite fun. I wish they had actually poured it so that they could people could see what it sounds like because it is a really interesting sound. Like I've seen those jugs before. So I think they definitely, that might have given her a few more points if they'd actually tested it out. John bringing in Grieg's diaries I thought was very inventive and original. Something that 99% of people wouldn't have thought of. So that is, I definitely think it was deserving of high marks in this task. It, yeah, it was just completely out there, but really, really did sound like Greg Davis. He, he definitely tried the hardest in that regard. And I think thought it was pretty funny. I was a bit surprised by Nick's. I was fully expecting him to go completely wild with it. Um, although he did, he did just go for like a classic option. He just rhymed one, one part of uh, the word with Greg. And yeah, I, that was quite surprised. It wasn't exciting or anything. Um, I did think he would go crazy with it, just with my experience of the kind of things he's done in comedy. Sophie started out really, really strong with her story about Pam and Willie. There is an extended outtake of this moment that is hilarious. I strongly recommend you uh, watch it. I think there's another one for this episode as well, which I'll talk about in a second. That was a hilarious moment to start like the episode off with. And also I think it's a great introduction to people who haven't seen Sophie before. You just get an insight into how 
uh, like crazy and funny she is. But the egg babies, which were her actual prize, I thought were really cute and creative. Three points. I do, I guess I agree with. I definitely think um, it was very good and there is a big step up from like the eggs benedict um in my opinion so yeah maybe she could have got more points for it but i think three is fair enough as we consider the greeks diaries um and also steve's at peg mavis that we'll uh go on to now i do agree with greg that he maybe did go a bit over a top over the top with um how much effort he put into it considering it was just a surprise task but i'm not complaining i thought it was very funny the doll thing was quite creepy in my opinion um but very creative again and i think you know rewarding creativity is really good and rewarding the amount of effort he went into to um elevate his prize task to a level that they that nobody else on the panel had so yes, I definitely do agree with Greg's scoring in this regard. I do think it was a pretty difficult one to score, but as I said, I thought the prize task was quite good. It was funny, allowed the contestants to get creative with it, and you did get a wide range of prizes. Overall, I thought this was a really good prize task and a great way to open the episode. I did say I would talk about the other outtake, and I'll mention it now before I forget, but um, there's an outtake that showed that Alex's like tablet actually controlled the scores, which I thought it was just a prop and seemingly everybody thought it was just a prop, including Greg. So um, that I was shocked by. I think it's really cool that he's actually put in the um, the, the scores into his tablet um, and that's what goes up on the screen. I know obviously he doesn't control every aspect of it, I think. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was really interesting and something that we're only finding out at series 17. Now onto the first proper task of the episode. This was the risk to do the riskiest thing involving um, the egg without breaking it. Um, and immediately we got Nick's amazing vampire Dracula costume. Absolutely fantastic. I loved his outfit. I also um, did like Steve's like tux t-shirt. I thought that was quite funny. But yeah, I just had to mention, had to mention that. I do really like this task. I think it's interesting that they started with a very like broad task like the contestants could do anything with it. And I like that we did get a mix of actually doing risky things and also the kind of like creatively risky things. I liked all the different ideas people had, whether they were like extremely risky ideas or just a bit uh, dirty ideas. But yeah, I thought this is a really fun task. And I liked Steve pointing out the little number nine carriage, which is definitely a little Easter egg put in there for him. Um, but yeah, this was a great task and starting off with Nick, I think he had a great idea to hard boil the egg and this one it definitely was my favourite attempt at the task. I was absolutely gutted when the egg broke at the end. But this, there were some smart elements to it, as I said, like hard boiling the egg. He thought of something genuinely risky and entertaining, like throwing the bricks um, as close as the egg as possible and there were some really great moments where, you know, the brick jumped over the egg or got really close. Um, but yes, it was stressful and it was genuinely risky and I, I definitely the riskiest um, attempt that we had in my opinion. I thought the editing in this uh, task was great, uh, particularly in Nick's one and in Steve's one, which I'll talk about in a bit. But yeah, this one was definitely my favourite. The, as I said, heartbreaking at the end when it broke and then the crow eating it at the end was just a fantastic way to end it, a heartbreaking way. Um, but definitely fits in with the more like macabre fe theme that we've got going on. Um, I think that was a fun thing. And again, starting off with Nick, if you're a new viewer, that's going to be instantly entertaining. It's entertaining for us as viewers as well as existing viewers, where it is something that's stressful, raises your heart rate a bit. Um, and something that you get genuinely invested in right from the get go. Um, even if you've never known who Nick is before, you've never seen Taskmaster, like I can't help but feel that everybody would have been invested in wanting him to succeed, um, particularly in the way that the editing was done, where it paused just before it did or didn't hit the egg. Um, so yes, this was a fantastic attempt. I think pairing Joanne with Nick was a great editing choice as well, because hers, while she did succeed, she was a bit too safe in my opinion with it. Again, she did gain points, so it was a good thing to do, but wrapping in bubble wrap, I think was a good idea. I think maybe perhaps a bit too much bubble wrap. It did, in my opinion, limit her a little bit because you didn't, you weren't seeing her throw an egg at a wall or playing playing tennis with an egg. It was playing it with a big ball of bubble wrap. So for me, there wasn't really any risk there involved. 
But again, as I said, it was smart because she got four points, but yeah, not very risky. John's one um, is one that I can imagine people be having mixed feelings about. It's one that I sort of have mixed feelings about. I think it was entertaining and I think definitely a good approach at doing this riskier task because it allowed him to create like fictional risk without actually risking breaking the egg. So he was smart in the sense that he never actually broke, got near to breaking the egg, but also did create this risky, uh, risky story and event that happens. To me, I do think the story could have been improved to perhaps add, like, if you're gonna be creating like fictional risks, then at least go with something that is actually like really, really risky. Because you know, all it was is very like slow moving car, avoiding a cow and crashing into a fake brick wall. I definitely think there's more that he could have done with it, um, but it did redeem itself in my opinion by John pointing out the fact that they had like a two hour health and safety meeting about it, which did make it seem like put into reality like how much time and effort he would have actually had to put into that task. Not that I didn't think he did, but it definitely adds to the riskiness. Steve's one I did absolutely love. And again, I was gutted when it broke at the end. I do think that Greg could have been a bit lenient on this and given him the points because technically he had completed the task, he did his risky thing and it was only when he was exiting the room that the egg broke. So I definitely understand why Greg did disqualify him because it was like so close to the end of the task and there wasn't a definitive, right, time is over, we finish the task. Yeah, I can understand why, but I was absolutely gutted for Steve that he got disqualified because it was a genuinely fantastic um, attempt at the task. I loved his story and all of the puns that went along with it. It was very entertaining, it was fun, and there was genuinely some risks there with going over the ramp and stuff like that. And yeah, I thought his puppetry was great. Um, yeah, in my opinion, if it was me scoring, I wouldn't have disqualified him. But yeah, what do you think? Do you think he should have been disqualified on this one? Um, let me know in the comments below. And finally, there is Sophie who balanced the egg on her head, which immediately fell off. Again, more risk there than what John and uh, Joanne did. But yeah, perhaps a bit too simple, but there was a lot of risk there because the egg did, did break. But I did love Greg's uh, offensive impression of her in the studio. I thought that was just hilarious. Um, but again, this task I think was really good. It was one that, as I said, created like stressful moments and things that would have got the viewers excited and a bit anxious. And um, yeah, I just thought it was a really well done task. It allowed the contestants to be creative as well in how, what, in what they wanted to do, whether to take a more simple approach and just do something genuinely risky or to be creative with it and create like a film or something. But yes, a fantastic start to the task. And I think we got a bit of everybody's personality in this as well. I think we had Joanne going safe but reliable, Nick doing something genuinely risky, going with the task, um, unfortunately failing, Sophie going with something simple and failing, just going with that first idea that you have, and Steve and John getting more creative with it, and Steve creating something that's genuinely really cinematic and really cool. The next task was a team task, and this was to paint an animal doing something surprising on the blinds without seeing other people's blinds and following all the order and what trying to work out the order of the blinds as well this was a really difficult task in my opinion i was so confused about what they were doing for like a good part of it i was like sophie i didn't understand what was going on but yeah i do think it was a good task introducing a creative one at the start i think was quite good it does it, like it was a funny task it was genuinely really good and i think it really as a team task as the first team task i thought it was really strong it immediately puts the teammates into having to work together very uh, cohesively to try and think of the same idea, to paint it in a way that it would fit together well, and to also communicate in a difficult way with only having to speak two words at a time. And I think I would have got very stressed out on this and I think it would have been very, very difficult. Sophie was absolutely hilarious in this. As Greg said, that she was gonna be a delight this season. I think that's absolutely true because, oh my gosh, absolutely hilarious. I love that she didn't have a clue a single second that was in that task and her manically rolling the paint roller and painting all of the things red was hilarious. 
But Steve and Nick, I think it was a great pairing. I think they go really, really well together. Um, their painting was great. I was so annoyed when it was revealed that that wasn't the actual order, but um, it was a really like genuinely good painting and cohesive as well that they managed to get everything in a like similar style that even if you did be nice and put them in the right uh, position, it did look like a really good drawing. It is such a shame that it didn't line up properly. I was really gutted. I thought it was fantastic. But even without that, their attempt was still amazing because as I said, I didn't know what was going on and having to work out all those different things um, that you might not even know the answer to. I thought it was really, really hard. And the team of three really emphasised how difficult it was because even if we take out Sophie, who, as we've established, didn't have a clue what was happening, even trying to get the drawings similar between Joanne and John, who did agree on what to draw, like they got the colours the same and they got everything, but the style was so different um, to each other's that it didn't even look like a drawing, like when you paired, when you took out Sophie's bits either, if that makes sense. So I think it really does uh, show how impressive Stephen Nick's attempts was, that it, it all looked like it could have been drawn by one person. But I did love Sophie's little drawings that she did on hers. It was very funny. Um, but yeah, this was a really fantastic task, I think, as a team task. It, as I said, really, really difficult, but it really forced the teams to work together. The next task was the location task, which was to hula hoop Gary the gorilla um, before he crossed the finish line with the time being doubled every time he got a limb wet. Uh, this, I think, was my favourite task out of all the tasks in this uh, in this episode. I thought this was hilarious. I would, this is one that I would love to do. And I love how excited Nick got about uh, being near the river. And I love just how much fun everybody seemed to have, except for Sophie. <laughs> but yeah, I think this is such a great task. And as I said, one that would be fun to try. And I think as uh, Steve pointed out, it's like being back at the, like the fairground. And I think this is a really good example of taking like a simple thing that's kind of known and loved, like, you know, the hoopla games, and turning it into a unique uh, and more difficult task with some fun taskmaster uh, elements thrown in there, such as doing it on a gorilla and a lake and like adding those extra uh, difficulties there. With Nick's attempt, I didn't notice this the first time it was pointed out on Reddit, but I did go back and watch it and they edited out Nick's reflection in the river um, in the like the first clip when they're looking out at it. Uh, because he's a vampire and vampires don't have a reflection, which I think is such a fun editing thing. I don't know if they're going to do it in every single episode. That would be a lot of work. But I think even if it's just like an Easter egg in one episode at the beginning, I thought it was just a fantastic choice and just absolutely amazing. Nick's attempt was very funny. Unfortunately, he did miss all of the first ones. But I think getting into the river and pulling... Uh, Gary was a good idea. Even though it didn't like penalise him a lot in terms of his time, I think completing the task with a high time is better than doing than not completing the task at all. And it was a good attempt. And I think how you'd expect most people's attempts to go. Steve, John and Joanne did exceptionally well at this task, particularly Joanne who got it on her second time, which is really, really impressive. Um, and again, just everybody's ha everyone seemed to just have fun with this and I loved how, I loved John's distance throw. That was incredible that he managed to get that. I love that there have been multiple moments throughout uh, Taskmaster where um, they have, like a contestant has done something like genuinely really impressive and it just has absolutely like no bearing on the scores. It's just something cool that they've done. Um, like first thing that comes to mind is like Mark's, Mark Watson's like yogurt kick or yogurt throw. Just genuinely very impressive and amazing and so this doesn't have any bearing on the points or scores at all and sophie coming in again as the most memorable attempt just chaos from the start i think waiting for the for gary to get like halfway through was a weird idea because obviously that gives you less distance to work with and less time to work with yeah just the chaos of her just chucking the hula hoops Get one getting stuck in the tree, one, some shots getting quite close, one shot going completely the wrong way, um, and then trying to hop across a river. Just genuinely manic things, and it was just hilarious. The getting stuck in the river, there was genuine like cause for concern there, in my opinion. I'm surprised Alex didn't act at all and try to help um, from a, like, a production and like health and safety point of view. Like, you could very easily get stuck in there. Like, she was really struggling to walk through the river. 
Um, but yeah, Alex doing nothing to help was hilarious. I love how they pointed that out in the studio as well. But yeah, this was a fantastic task. Again, Sophie getting no points in this. Um, but as Greg pointed out, she is definitely going to be the people's champion this season. I think she is just hilarious and yeah, just a fantastic contestant already. The studio task this time was to bring the sausage to life and just basically an elimination round where you add to your drawing of a sausage. And this has been done before, not as a sausage, but in similar ways before. It is quite a fun task to see the contestants get creative um, and have like their drawings contradict each other and things like that. It is a good format for a studio task in that sense, it being an elimination round does last a while because sometimes you have issues where tasks are cut short or tasks don't really work as well as you expect and nobody gets any points and things like that. So in that sense, it's a really good idea. Steve's drawing was particularly good and I was gutted that Nick's drawing got disqualified because I thought it, it was quite a fun, um, a fun drawing. Just yeah, adding the vampire, fangs really screwed him over um but yeah i thought everybody did quite well at this task everyone was quite inventive with things that they could add to their drawings um and yes the scoring in this task means we resulted in a three-way tie at the end and correction to what alex said this is actually the second this is actually the third time it's happened not the second time um but still a very very rare thing to happen and i think that it for, for it to happen in the first episode is really interesting. Is it an indication that we're gonna have very tight scores throughout the whole season? I don't know, but I'm very excited to find out. The tiebreaker task was to find the only chess piece that wasn't in the box of peas. And Steve, like literally thinking outside the box and finding it very, very quickly, I think is an indication that he is gonna do very, very well. Overall, this was a fantastic first episode. I'm very much excited for the rest of the season. I have already seen the second episode uh, because I am filming this very late. But yes, I think it was just such a great start to the season. And I think even if you're if you're going into it without knowing any of the contestants, I hope that you have been surprised and delighted by them as I have in knowing three slash four out of five. They're, in my opinion, they're all gonna be a joy this season. I think everybody has shone and stood out individually and the group as a whole I think is working very well together. The studio already has a good level of, of banter and fun and energy to it which I think is great to see in the first episode and yeah as I said I cannot wait to see the rest of the season. Interestingly this episode did premiere in New York for the first ever time they've done a premiere um, interesting that it's in New York, um, not in the UK where the season originates and airs first. Um, at first I was a bit gutted that it wasn't in the UK, but UK people do get access to the studio records. I do really hope they continue with the premieres, whether it is in New York or hopefully in the UK so I can go on, uh, go to one. As I said, I guess I could go to the recordings, but I haven't been successful with tickets and it's a very awkward place for me to get to. But unfortunately, there were quite a lot of issues with the premiere, not in terms of the actual episode and Greg and Alex's part in it, because there was a Q&A at the end. The venue oversold the tickets and loads of people got turned away at the door and so many people had travelled for it, which is just horrible. It's just, yeah, it's so unprofessional. I don't know if it was a greed thing trying to get more tickets or what, whether it was a genuine an admin error, but that is just so horrible for people who got turned away. And does dampen the excitement of it as well, even if you are somebody who got in or you're kind of looking from the outside, for it to be the first premiere of ta a Taskmaster episode and for it to have those issues around it is really upsetting and I'm sure Greg and Alex were upset by it as well. But this does pose the question as whether or not we're going to get um, either any US contestants in the UK version or whether they are going to... Uh, perhaps do a new US Taskmaster. Um, I do think both possibilities are there. Maybe they might start with introducing some more US comedians to Taskmaster, whether that be them coming over and doing, an ep doing a season in the UK, or whether they do try and do a US only one, maybe as like a special, like a New Year's treat or something like that, like a US edition or something, where they do have Greg and Alex like score and judge it before then opening it up to a full US Taskmaster series. Um, either way, I think they're gonna do some great things and it definitely has skyrocketed, skyrocketed in popularity in America, which is fantastic to see. 
So I think that's everything I wanted to talk about today. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like, it really helps the channel, and comment down below your thoughts on the first episode of Taskmaster Series 17. And yeah, subscribe if you want to see more videos to do with Taskmaster. I'll have some more out for you soon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!